This is a brief tutorial to uh, describe how you use Microsoft Excel to create a uh, standard editions uh, plot. This work is adapted pretty heavily from uh, uh, Harris's Quantitative Chemical Analysis book, Chapter 5, Section 3. So it would be a good idea to go back and review that chapter after you've uh, uh, had a look at this tutorial. The standard addition equation, which I have up here in the upper right hand corner, is, uh, uh, is used when we want to figure out the concentration of an unknown solution without using a calibration curve. One of the times that we might want to do this is when we have a, uh, an unknown sample that has uh, a rather significant matrix in it and creating a calibration curve with that particular matrix might be uh, uh, impractical. We make the assumption that the intensity of whatever our detector is, whether it's HPLC, GC, uh, um, uh, spectroscopy, we make the assumption that the uh, response is linear and that uh, the response is going to be directly proportional to the concentration of the material added. That's essentially what we mean when we say that the de detector response is linear. And we, uh, um, one of the things that we need to take into consideration, however, with a standard addition is that when you add a little aliquot of, your, uh, of a standard to a solution, you're changing the volume. So the tricky part about this is calculating the actual concentrations because the volume is always changing. Now there are ways that you can set up this experiment where effectively the, the uh, volume doesn't change, but uh, since we are interested in, uh, uh, in, in making precise and accurate measurements in this class, we're going to use a little more rigorous analysis. These two equations in the second row here are describing how we calculate the actual concentration of the solution after adding a, a volume of the, uh, 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 of the standard. So let's go through a couple of definitions here just so that we're on the right page. X is the concentration of our, uh, in our unknown sample. S is the concentration of our stock solution. F and I stand for final and initial, so the initial concentration, and then after we did something to it, this is the final concentration. V0 is the initial volume of our unknown. V is the current volume of our unknown. And Vs is the, concentra or is the volume of the uh, uh, stock solution that we've added. And then up here, Ix is the intensity of the signal uh, response, or the detector response, of our unknown. And then Is plus x is the intensity of our signal after, uh, after we've added some stock solution. I've got a, a, a trivial example here. Let's say perhaps this is our uh, um, uh, results from an HPLC uh, uh, chromatogram. We start off with uh, uh, our unknown, which is the shaded in region, and let's just say that that uh, has a, a response of 1.41 detector units. The units don't really matter. And then each one of these subsequent ones are additions of our stock solution. And the numbers that we have right here are uh, the, uh, again, the, the height of the peak after, uh, uh, after those additions. We do a little bit of algebra to uh, um, to substitute these two equations into uh, into this one, and ultimately we get a uh, a linear equation where this what's in blue on the left hand side is our y value, and what's blue on our right hand side is our x value, and we've got y equals jump over m x plus b. So we've got a linear equation here, um, and essentially we uh, we should get a uh, a, a linear uh, response to our addition of a known solution, a known concentration to an unknown solution, 
and from that information we should be able to get our initial concentration. Notice how our initial concentration is in the slope, but it's dependent on the initial uh, response. But our intercept is just the initial response. So if we divide these two, the I, the intensity should cancel out and we'll be left with just the concentration of our initial sample. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, I've adjusted this, uh, this spreadsheet here so that the information in orange, those are the things that the user would have to add. The ones in gray, that's the output, so that's the answer. And some titles to hopefully describe things a little bit here. And the yellow boxes are the notes to describe how I've calculated some of the, uh, uh, the trickier cells. So the first thing we do is we uh, um, input the uh, you know what belongs in these orange cells here the initial volume of our uh, of our unknown in this case 50 milliliters and I just uh, in this hypothetical case I said that our uh, um, uh, standard stock solution had a concentration in millimolar of 275 units 275 millimolar. Then in this region here, I started off with measuring the uh, the response when I with no stock solution added, and then subsequently one, two, three, four uh, milliliters in this case. Why don't I go ahead and put a little ml in there just to keep me honest? And I record the uh, uh, the signal responses. Notice how those re signal responses correspond to the ones, you know, so that's the data that we collected. Now, the X column needs to be this equation right here. It needs to be this, uh, this quantity. And so that quantity is the, uh, the concentration of the stock solution modified, multiplied by the ratio of the, uh, uh, the volume uh, of the, uh, uh, the stock solution and the original volume. And so we see here that I've got uh, uh, B5. B5 is the concentration. D5 for this first one is the initial, uh, is the volume of the stock solution added, which is zero. And then B4, which is the original volume, which is 50. Naturally, since there's a zero there, that should be zero. But as we move down to uh, the uh, subsequent equations, we see that uh, we get a uh, we get a value that uh, that seems to make sense. Likewise, we need to uh, come up with a uh, with this expression for the. Uh, uh, for the y values, the intensity of the signal with the uh, 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 with the standard added is our y is our original data that we recorded from our instrument, and that's in our column E. Then we've got uh, D5 plus B4. D5 is the amount of stock that we've added, and we're adding to that the total volume. So this value here should always be slightly larger, or equal to or larger than the, uh, the initial value, uh, 50 and higher. And then we divide that by the, uh, the original value, which was, uh, which was B4. Remember that I'm using dollar signs here to keep values constant and no dollar signs so that when I copied them, the values, the equations down, they would propagate as, uh, as appropriately. So that's how I get my, uh, um, my X and my Y data. I plotted those and fancied up the, uh, the graph to get a, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the concentration of the, of the added standard and the uh, detector response. We get a nice straight line. I use the line ST command to figure out the slope and the intercept plus the corresponding errors for this best fit line. Remember, this is an array function 
and we've talked about array functions in the past, so I'm not going to discuss them uh, uh, at this point. There is another video to, uh, uh, to take a look at the, that if you'd like. And we use this information to figure out the, uh, the answer to our question, what's the concentration of our unknown? Remember that our unknown is related to the slope and the intercept. And the slope and the intercept are kept, in my case, in, uh, in cells F11 and E11. So I divide those two, and I get a, uh, a concentration of the unknown of 6.3, in this case, 6.3 millimolar. That number seems fairly, uh, uh, fairly reasonable. We notice here that uh, uh, by increasing, almost doubling the, uh, uh, the concentration, with the uh, the first stock uh, solution aliquot, I almost double the uh, 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 the detector response. So the number is uh, is making sense. Lastly, we want to uh, uh, figure out what the error is in our uh, our x-intercept, and that's a a rather cumbersome equation. I've put the uh, the response or the equation down here. Again, this is another array equation, so it needs to be in its array equation because of this value right here. This sum. The equation that I'm uh, that I'm modeling in this yellow box here is this one. This is the equation to calculate the error in a uh, in the x-intercept of a uh, of a linear equation of a linear response. And notice how it needs the uh, standard error in y, which we got from our line st slope that we got from our line st and the number of uh, of points in this case one two three four five and then once we put all that together we get a uh, uh, an error which is in the same units as uh, um, as this is as this one is here so the units here are going to all be in the same units as the stock solution so the x-intercept says that my concentration of my original sample is 6.37 millimolar error, plus or minus 0 0.25. And since we know that the, uh, uh, that the real way to calculate significant figures is the first digit of the uncertainty, or uh, of the... Uh, uh, of, of the uncertainty is the last significant digit. It looks like we've got a, uh, a final value of 6.4 plus or minus 0 0.2 millimolar as our answer. So I encourage you to take a look at the uh, uh, the textbook now. They have a couple other examples and that, uh, uh, that should help you out in any subsequent times where we need to do uh, uh, use the method of standard addition to figure out the unknown concentration.